worship team has uh, help for us. And let's just open our hearts to receive from the Lord. Good morning, sister. And uh, all these dear ones still coming in. God bless you. Uh, just so you know, uh, I am, this is, I'm filling in today for Brother Keith. Uh, Brother Keith and Sister Diane are in Maryland, uh, uh, ministering at the church down there. I, I believe it's in Silver Springs, right? Um, but if you don't know, I don't even remember. I think it's in Silver Springs, Maryland. But uh, they'll be back with us soon. But this morning, we're here together. But the Lord is here with us already. We've had a uh, very interesting Sunday school class. And let's uh, just enjoy the presence of God together in this place. Praise the Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Precious Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you. 
Let's just enjoy the presence yes. of Jesus Amen. for another minute. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, Jesus, we praise you. We love you, Lord. We worship you. Oh, God, you're so good to us. And we're thankful this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I had a, a very interesting experience on Friday. Uh, <laughs> this has never happened to me before. But uh, I had a visit from a past employee who I, I had to let go close to a year ago. And this fella, he had a legitimate need to come, but uh, he hung around after we took care of that, and he said, can I talk to you? And I said, okay, well, I have to get something done first. Can you wait? And so he, he waited. And so I went to talk to him, and he asked me about what it's like being a Christian. And he said, you know, I... I watched you while I was here and and you're very calm <laughs> I said you don't know what's going on on the inside <laughs> but uh, he we just sang about peace so undeniable and it's true Jesus gives us this wonderful peace in our hearts and I got to talk to this young man for probably over half an hour about why I have peace in my heart and what it's like to be saved and a child of God. And we, uh, I have a, a new girl working in the office next to me who's been there just about a week, and she was listening the whole time. And then at the end of the day, one of my other employees stayed late and started telling me how he has nightmares almost every night and can't account for it. And I, I started talking to him about how to have peace in his heart. I mean, this was the Lord providing opportunity like I've never had to these people who work with me every day, they see me make my mistakes and uh, I see them make theirs. But the witness of Christ is there and I have been praying for that for so long, for all these years, that God would bring hearts to himself and draw people to, them, to himself. This young man that, that I first mentioned is now attending church. He lives in Elizabeth and he's attending church up in that area. And uh, praise God, praise God. And uh, the other fellow, well, pray for him that God would uh, open his heart to receive Christ as his Lord and Savior. Because you know, you can do good things. And, and most of us here know that already. We've tried the good things. We've tried the do. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do... It's never enough, is it? We need a Savior. We need Jesus Christ as the Lord of our lives in our hearts. And he solves that whole problem. It's out of my hands. I belong to Jesus Christ now. Praise the Lord. I, I just, I had to share that. It was so wonderful. And, and yet I was so busy. <laughs> I, had, I was like running through the whole day. I, was, I didn't get home till 7.30 at night. I, I'm at work at 6.30 and I, I got, it was a long day. But you know what? There was time there to fit that in and talk to these people for Jesus' sake. Praise God. And I pray that we all get those opportunities to talk to others about the love of Christ. Now, um, to turn a corner, uh, again, I'm Phil, and I'm filling in for Brother Keith today. Uh, he's not here, but 
I'm here and I'm Phil, so praise God. <laughs> it's a dad joke, and I'm a dad. <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, we have some people to celebrate that are having birthdays, have or have, uh, will or have had birthdays. I know we have one that already did, but if you have a birthday this month, the month of April, would you stand? We want to uh, rejoice that you're here and that you're part of the family of God. And, oh, praise God, there's more than I thought. And we want to pray for you this morning. Yes. Your mom's is okay. And uh, if you look at the back of your bulletin, you'll see that there are a number of birthdays. But God bless you. And happy birthday to you. Um, can I have a, a, a I, I'm going to call on Sister Betty. Would you pray for these dear ones that God would bless them in this year? Praise the Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. God bless you. You a happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you feel Jesus near. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. And the best you ever had. Praise God. Praise God. Sister Karen has some announcements for us. I'm going to give you this so everybody can hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, well, it's been a big week, and Pastor Organ was promoted, promoted to heaven. And I just wanted to give you the information about the um, services. If you if you can come, Demarco's funeral home funeral home in Monroe. If you need any more information, I have the address here. Um, the visitation is Monday, 5 to 7. And Pastor Keith will be there at 7 o'clock giving um, a little funeral service. And then Tuesday at 10 to 11 at the funeral home. And then the burial will be at Green Park Cemetery in Morganville. And with the spots with chapel, we'll be sending flowers. And Sister Jenny's here. Maybe you could give her a big hug. And um, her address is 46 River Street if you would like to send her a card. And um, we're going to pray. We're going to keep praying for them, right? The Lord's, the Lord's good, and he's going to take care of them. And he's up there waiting for us. He's probably watching today, probably singing. <laughs> My son was telling me what a blessing he was to him and how when he saw him one time, he burst into song. And then he took out his harmonica. He had a harmonica right in his pocket, started playing his harmonica. So I bet he's up there playing his harmonica right now, <laughs> watching. So if you're able to come, come to those services or whatever you can come to him and pray for Jenny and her family. The Lord is good. Um, let me just give you the services for this week. Is Everything is the same. We have a, a service tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, we have prayer meetings this Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the building. It's not on Zoom this week. Moms in Prayer is Thursday at 8.45 and Not Forgotten Saturday 10 to 12. And I think that's it. Just that we have a special speaker, Abby, um, Abby Schley, I think you say their last name, Schley. Um, it, her husband, Tim, will be speaking to us on April 28th. And let's see, the food pantry is personal care items, shampoo, conditioner, soap, and deodorant, things like that. So that's it. I think I got it all. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I am um, just one of those kind of people who likes to hear from others. And so if one of you or 
more. Uh, have a word on your heart. I have a mic here that I can give you so that you can share uh, a testimony with us. Is there anybody that wants to give glory to God this morning and, and share something that's been going on like, like I did about what happened at work on Friday? Anybody? Yes. Good. Well, you, nobody online can hear you without it. So. I'm never going to pass up an opportunity to give glory to God, but Amen. I had already shared this in Sunday school, and I just was so encouraged last week how Keith and I had us going up there, showing the proof of the resurrection, changed lives Amen. from darkness to light, so we are the new resurrection in Christ. What a blessing. So I just want to give God the glory again. We would not be here living for Jesus if he hadn't died and rose again. And I'm so grateful to my Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise, you. Praise the Lord. Someone else? Anybody? Not that you have to, but if you want to. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's so nice to hear what God does and how God's working in, in uh, people's lives. And when we get together and uh, can share that with one another, it helps everybody's faith grow. Everybody is blessed when you participate with what God is working on in your life. Praise God. We're going to um, sing number 392 together. Jamie's going to help us. Uh, let's stand as we sing, and then we'll uh, pray for the young ones and dismiss them to their service downstairs. Praise God. <clears throat> Number, I believe it's on the screen. Yes, it is. Okay. Simply trusting every day, trusting through a stormy way. as they are dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our, our children, our young people. We are so blessed yes. that you have brought them into our lives and that we can uh, walk with you with them. 
We pray, oh God, your blessing upon them as they go to their service downstairs. We pray that your spirit would uh, bless each heart, touch each yes. life, and win them uh, for you for eternity. In Jesus' yes. name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be dismissed or seated, whichever the case may be. <laughs> We're going to spend a few minutes in prayer for um, different needs that we have. Uh, of course, we want to uh, remember uh, Sister Jenny and the family uh, in prayer that God will uh, help them. And we're thankful that, that uh, God has taken Pastor Organ to be with him, to be with him. Praise God. I want to say... Uh, for all of our, our sake, uh, Brother Organ was uh, just a blessing to me. He was uh, so unpretentious and genuine in his love for Christ and his love for people. Uh, he was a blessing to me ever since I met him. Uh, and uh, well, you know him just like I did, uh, at least in a measure, and we're thankful for his life. Praise God. We want to remember that family in prayer. We want to remember our brother Keith and sister Diane, uh, who, like I said, are ministering in uh, Maryland this morning. Um, and in conjunction with that, uh, I just want to say, let's take a moment in our prayer time to pray for other churches, to pray for the work of God, the kingdom of, of heaven, wherever uh, people meet in Christ's name. Uh, we want to remember our sister uh, Dottie and our brother Tom. Uh, brother Tom is, uh, has health needs, and we want to lift him up. And, of course, Dottie is, is with him there and that. Um, our sister Joanne, uh, where did she go to? Oh, she had to, to leave. We want to remember her. Our sister Penny, Sister Marcia, who's with us today. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to remember Sister Esther Sadat. Uh, and, of course, the needs that, that we don't necessarily want to mention, uh, personal things on our hearts that yet we lay uh, lift up to the Lord. So let's pray together. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you for the invitation to draw near, dear Lord. Thank you that that veil of the temple was torn in two when Jesus came died on the cross. You made the way into your presence for us, for all of us to enter. And so, Lord, we draw near this morning and we, we come to you with these various needs. We pray for our uh, Brother Keith and Sister Diane as they minister to the church in Maryland this morning. We pray your blessing upon them, upon the church, and upon that time that they shared together. Uh, we pray that you would return them to us in, uh, safely as well. Uh, let the blessing of God rest upon their heads. We pray, O oh God, for the work of the Lord uh, in uh, churches that we're affiliated with uh, around the area, dear Jesus, and uh, those that we know in other places. We pray that the kingdom of God would come and that your will would be done in house of God after house of God, that the word of God would be preached, that the, the spirit of God would preside, that hearts would be drawn to Christ and changed into the image of your Son. We want to remember those that are in need in their bodies, dear Lord, these different ones that we've mentioned, our sister Esther Sidat, dear Lord, uh, our, excuse me, brother Tom and sister Dottie, uh, Joanne, dear Lord, Penny, different ones that, that need you to strengthen them and heal them, dear Lord. We pray for each and every one. We want to, uh, again, remember our sister Jenny, and the family, dear Lord, that you would comfort their hearts, that you would draw very near to them, that your presence would be uh, around and within. Uh, and Jesus, in these uh, coming days, that uh, they will feel your comfort very close. We pray, dear Lord, that uh, for those needs that we don't mention publicly, but that are on our hearts, uh, possibly for loved ones that are uh, 
well, that don't know you and that we would like to share so much the kingdom of heaven with and uh, walk with you together with them. We pray, oh God, that you would come to them. We pray for other needs, dear Lord, financial, spiritual, emotional, dear Lord, whatever they might be, we lift them up before you. We know you understand each and every one. You walk this earth with us and you know what it's like to be where we are. And we thank you, dear Lord, and we ask that you would intervene in each and every case and that you would be glorified in every time. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Excuse me while I get my notes, okay? <laughs> now, I don't know if I'm just a strange bird. Um, my wife might be able to fill you in on that. But <laughs> things have been happening that recently for me that um, I'm glad about. I, uh, I, I guess it's over a week ago, I, I was having my time with the Lord and the Lord laid this thought on my heart uh, that I'm going to talk to us about this morning. And um, shortly after I, I wrote some notes down about it, I, I didn't know why, but it was there. So I just wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. And uh, I went <laughs> to go get my hair cut. And the lady that was cutting my hair and I started talking about this very thing. This very thing, and what I want to talk to us about this morning is uh, kind of simple. It's, it's a simple thought, simple, simple message, but it's time. Time. Just the concept of time. You know, time is, is sort of a, something that's manipulated uh, by people, uh, possibly we ourselves, uh, in... Uh, Science, I, I studied science for a number of years, and um, science, especially evolutionary theory, takes time and, and stretches time out now. It's into the billions of years uh, that we're uh, supposed to have uh, been uh, undergoing the process of becoming this, the world that we see, the natural world, okay? Um, so, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. You know, that, that disturbs me because it's really not honest. If uh, Brother Matt was talking about mathematical probability of Christ fulfilling uh, the prophecies found in Scripture earlier in our Sunday school class, and if you use mathematics and you look at different aspects of the natural world and you apply that uh, to the ideas that evolutionary theory presents, uh, everything crumbles. Everything crumbles. But it's still taught. Um, some people say that, you know, in, in the United States, you can't um, speak against evolution. You can talk against the government, but you can't talk against evolution. And in other countries, you can talk against uh, evolution, but you can't talk about against the government. So uh, anyway, it is what it is where you are. But uh, anyway, we, we have these enormous stretches of time that are invoked for the development of the natural world as we see it. On the other hand, many people use time as uh, something that uh, we need to use right now. We have to do this right now because there's some evil or disaster impending upon us and we have to uh, take action immediately or else we're going to face the consequences. And, uh, you know, that mostly for us here comes through uh, political ideas like climate change. Uh, we have to stop cows. We have to kill them. Uh, because they, their carbon footprint is causing the glaciers to melt. I'm, I'm not just, 
I'm not just making this up and I'm not trying to be facetious necessarily, but this is what we're told from different aspects of uh, different groups in society. Uh, you know, fishing is, is uh, evil or, um, the, finally, one group recently came down to saying there's too many people on the planet. There's too many people on the planet, and that's what they're getting at. So, um, but meanwhile, they may say, you know, uh, we, we have people saying that for you, you've got plenty of time, but meanwhile, behind the scenes, they're acting as fast as they can to get something they want done so that nobody can have time to object, okay? Basically, what I'm trying to get at is that we use time to our advantage according to our purpose. You understand what I mean? Uh, if, if I want you to do something quickly, I'll say, it's got to get done now because, and basically it's because I want it to be. <laughs> but um, if you're uh, wanting me to do something, I've got all the time in the world because it's your project, and I'm, I'm pointing at my wife. <laughs> Poor Karen. <laughs> she wants me to get this done, and uh, I have no inclination to do it right now. <laughs> okay? Um, sorry, Karen. <laughs> but anyway, I, I do try to cooperate, and sometimes uh, I do. <laughs> well, um, I, I ran into a person recently who uh, the attitude was that nothing that they did mattered necessarily. They didn't come right out and say it, but the attitude was that because time is basically infinite, who I am, what I do, doesn't really count because there's always more time. And my portion in the scheme of things is really inconsequential because everything's so big that I don't matter. And of course, we have other people that, you know, it bounces back and forth, like I said. They, they think that everything that you do matters and they're so upset about this, that, or the other thing that uh, they actually will cause conflict of some nature, be it a war or uh, blocking highways by sitting on the street. Uh, I, I heard of some folks in Europe that actually went into a car dealership and glued themselves to the floor, super glued themselves to the floor to try and prove a point. Um, I, I have to hand it to the dealership. They just shut the lights off walked out and locked the door and left them in there. <laughs> I, I, you know, but anyway, some people get so exercised about what they're thinking about that they try to force the world around them into cooperating with them to get their purposes accomplished, whether they want to or not. Well, for a Christian, time is a real thing. It, it's, it's, uh, something that the Bible talks a, a lot about. Actually, and I didn't plan to say all this, but the time, in the, especially in the Old Testament, is so carefully laid out that to follow through the sequence of events from Adam to Christ is a miraculous study of the wonders of God in his word. Because hidden in the, the text of scripture are dates that are exact enough to tell when the world was created, when Christ was going to come, and Brother Matt mentioned it as a matter of fact this morning in our class, and to me, and I'm sharing this with you because it's so real to me, that means that time is important. Time is important. Christians, as Christians, we want to not just receive 
that knowledge, but we want to understand God's viewpoint on time through his word and think about it. After all, he's the one that created time in the first place. He's the one that set this whole universe in motion and he did it for a reason. He did it for a reason. Now, I'm going to uh, just interject something here. Like I said, I, I met this uh, young lady who didn't seem like time mattered to her. Uh, her idea is that nothing I do is important. When I went to get my hair cut and I talked to the woman cutting my hair, this woman, a middle-aged woman, she said to me, time is evil. Time is evil. And she bore, uh, went on to elaborate that her parents are becoming elderly and they're going to pass away soon. And we know what that's like. But she was attributing their imminent departure from her life as something evil based on time. Her daughter says she's getting old. She said her daughter was 23. And her daughter says she's getting old. And <laughs> she said, just wait, girl. Uh, anyway, um, and then we have people that say time is good. Everybody's got a different opinion of it. But in any case, let's look at this. Um, our viewpoint depends on our perspective. And our perspective can match God's. Okay, God has a plan and a purpose in time. The time that we have, that you know, we measure time according to the Earth's revolution, uh, uh, you know, revolving and going around the sun and so forth. If we were on another planet, we'd be maybe a lot younger or a lot older. Years and days kind of would be different, but that doesn't really matter. It, what matters is the progression of events that God has in His plan. And the most monumentous event to date was the life of Jesus Christ. And so much of the time that God spells out in the word is about him. Now he came and the Bible talks about it in Galatians. He says, in the fullness of time, God sent his son. In the fullness of time. In other words, meaning that God had a plan. Uh, first of all, I want to just mention point number one, that time is limited. How many of you knew that time was limited? Okay. I, <laughs> I'm always running out of it. But um, God said in the beginning, first of all, time has a beginning. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, it's had a starting point. And Oddly enough, I want to read this to you. Jesus talks about something that might uh, surprise us. This is uh, John chapter 6. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 54, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Time has a beginning, had a beginning, but time is going to have an end. There's going to be a last day. Now, this is not meant to be a doomsday message that, you know, uh, I, I'm not trying to put fear in anybody's heart by bringing this up, but I want us to get something here. Point number two that I have here is time is purposeful. Like I mentioned in Galatians, the Apostle Paul writes that in the fullness of time, God sent his son. In the fullness of time, when the time was right. And then, um, this is Jesus again. This is Mark chapter 1 
And you might remember this, when Jesus came and started his ministry in Galilee, uh, let me get the right verse here real quick. Um, now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, or I paraphrase that as the kingdom of God is here. Repent and believe in the gospel. So we see that God has a purpose and things that he's working on in the time that he's set up for this world. Look out the window and you look at that and if you were to be able to come back in a hundred years, that would be different. But God's plan would still be going on. How many millennia did it take from the creation of Adam to the coming of Christ? I can't remember at the moment. I've known, you know, read it of it, but the idea is God's working on something. Now, this the next thing I want to mention is that in case you haven't um, grasped or spent time getting a hold of it, our time is limited. My time on this earth has limits. I have a birthday. I was born on X day. But I'm also going to have a day when I go to be with the Lord. Uh, turn with me to Psalm 90, if you will. Psalm 90 in your Bible. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to start at verse, um, verse 10. The days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. And so we see that there's, there's a finite amount of time that we're given on this earth. And the next thing I want to mention is because our time is limited, we only have so much. And God has this purpose for the time that he's created and put us into. God wants us to use our time with purpose. We're not just here. We're not just floating through time, as it were. But God wants our time here on earth to be purposeful. Let's keep reading in Psalm 90. Uh, okay, verse 11. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. Have patience and keep going. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. What do you think he means by that? Well, I think he means that he doesn't want us to just waste the time we've been given. Who are those that you know of? When you think of people that you've known, who are the happiest people that you've known? I, I have known a lot of happy people. Thank God. And for me, the people that I've known that have had lives full of joy were those that lived their lives for Jesus Christ. Others I've seen just sort of pass away. But for those that lived their lives with a purpose, God's purpose, and that aligned their hearts, their reason for living, with God's reason for their life, and fulfilled that to the best of their ability, those were the happy people. When I think through the people that I've known, those were the happy people. Brother Organ was a man that was happy. 
Uh, you could tell us better than anyone. And he lived for Christ. He lived for Christ. And now he lives with Christ. Praise God. And those are the kind of people that I want to emulate. Let's keep going. Return, O Lord. Verse 13 of chap uh, Psalm 90. How long? And have compassion on your servants. And here, let's read the rest of this with an eye towards God's purpose for us. Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which you have, we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. It's interesting that what we do with our lives isn't just for us. Did you ever think of that? The way I live my life is so important once you understand because I'm living my life not just with you, but for you. And I'm living my life for my children and for your children so that what I do with my life counts for theirs. Because there's future involved in all of us. We're not alone and time is not just ours. We share this time and we overlap as we go. Uh, it's interesting to read through the Old Testament, you know, so-and-so begat so-and-so and begat so-and-so. And when you get into, uh, when you go into uh, Genesis, it says so-and-so lived so many years and begat a son and his name was. And after he begat that son, he lived so-and-so many years more. And uh, one time I did a, a little study. Uh, it was really funny. Uh, I was stuck in the hospital. I, I went to the doctor uh, because I had a bad chest cold. Uh, Might have been bronchitis, I don't know. But the doctor that I went to saw my family's history and uh, said, you know, this happened to your mom and that happened to your dad and it could be happening to you, so I'm going to put you in the hospital so that we can make sure you're okay. So I spent three days in the hospital and nothing was wrong other than I had a bad chest cold. But while I was there, I took the time and I, I took my Bible uh, and I actually, I never even left the emergency ward room area. I stayed in the emergency room for three days. So uh, in between trying to get naps and them waking me up to give me something to sleep with, um, <laughs> I did this study. No, that's, that's how it goes, but uh, where I took the life of this one and then the life of that one, and I was able to overlap and see, you know, this person lived all the way to that person's life, and then that person lived all the way to that one's life, and by the time I got to Noah, I think it was, Noah was only two or three people removed from Adam. And it's the same for us, but those things are a lot shorter. You know, I knew people that were alive in the 1800s when I was a child. And my son or daughter may live to know people, you know, et cetera. And when you think about it, there's might be a hundred 150 years between, but there's only one or two lives. The end of one to the, to the beginning of another. We overlap. And so what I do with my life and how I live my life and the purpose I incorporate into how I live matters. For them. 
it matters. The people that founded our country didn't live all that long ago. Thank God they did what they did. It matters to us today. It matters. The people that served the Lord in my childhood matter to me because I saw the glory of God in their life. And I want that. Here I am all these years later and I want that walk with Christ. I want that. And I want my children to have that. And I want your children to have that. And I want their children to have that. The significance of time is that this is our opportunity to prepare for eternity. Yes, my eternity. But the importance of time is that time can be used to our profit to the profit of the kingdom of God and to the profit of those who can take advantage of the kingdom when we're past. Praise the Lord. Now, first of all, for ourselves, for uh, selfish reasons, if you want to term it that, we need to use our time to know God better. I want to read you a scripture that's blessed me for uh, decades. Jesus, in his high priestly prayer, he prays in the Gospel of John. And this verse specifically, uh, well, I'll read the first few of chapter 17. Jesus spoke these words and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life. Now, I like to go, as I read my Bible, I like to go through and I like to uh, somehow highlight or underline or notate the definitions that God puts in the Bible. And here's a definition. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And this is our chance to know him. Time, the time that God has given us, is our chance to know God. And through knowing him, we receive eternal life. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And again, that's for our own use, but again, we should use our time in God's kingdom for the sake of the souls around us. You know, God came for, uh, sent Christ for a reason. I want to um, share some, a few more things as I uh, go on here. We have been so blessed by what God has done for us, all he's given us, what he's done for our lives, but it's not for us alone. Uh, Matthew 10, 8, if you want to look, but uh, you don't have to because it, it's uh, the story of when Christ sent the uh, disciples out to minister to the 70, out to minister uh, about the kingdom. And he says, uh, do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of the Samaritans. He was going to do that later. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Or like I like to paraphrase, the kingdom of heaven is here. And then he says this, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. God has given us so much in him but he doesn't want us to keep it to ourselves. He wants us to give it out to those around us. And here again, um, this, this is a blessing. This came to me this week too. This is from Acts chapter 10 when Peter was at Cornelius' house and Peter was uh, listened to Cornelius and then Peter starts to talk. Verse 34 of chapter 10 in Acts. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. 
But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching, excuse me, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, that word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. But keep listening. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. This is what Jesus went around doing. He did good things wherever he went. He didn't even have to be asked. You remember when he came into that town called Nain and there was a funeral procession. A widow taking her only son out to be buried, crying. And Jesus stopped that procession and raised this young man to life. Nobody asked him to do that. He did it because that's what God is like. His love reaches out towards the needs of our hearts. He knew this woman had no sustenance without a son, without a husband. In that day and age, it's possible she may have starved to death if no relatives took her in. He stopped that. He did good. And he healed those that were oppressed of the devil. Now, here in these different uh, passages of scripture and throughout the Bible, of course, we have a really, a very balanced perspective on time. Let's look at it again. Time is limited. Time is important. Time has a purpose. And we can take part in the purpose that God has in had in making time. So what should we do? <laughs> what are we going to do about it? Well, I think it would be good if each one of us personally made some goals about how we can be in step with God's plan for the time that he's given us. We see God's methods. First of all, um, God doesn't make people do anything against he gave us a will a free will he said you choose but then he encourages us to choose correctly doesn't he he says I, I love you and I want you to have the best I can give you and so he woos us and so let's use our time and not waste it how can we do that? Well, let's be wise and say, well, how, how much time am I likely to have? Or what are my opportunities that I have now? And let me use them for the Lord. Let us have purpose in the use of our time. And let our purposes match God's to reclaim souls for God's kingdom and their blessing. I, I like what uh, is written in Deuteronomy where he talks about the commandments that he gave his people and he says for your good always for your he says it over and over again for your good always I want you to do it this way because that's the best way for you to be happy I'm paraphrasing of course now when I talked to that woman who was cutting my hair I think she had some regrets about her past. And many of us do, don't we? We've done things, uh, said things, uh, been something that we're not proud of. And to look back can be profitable. But we have to be careful that we don't look back and lose ourselves in regret 
because we can't change the past, can we? There's nothing that we can do to undo what we did. But what we can do is look forward. Look forward and use the time that we still have for the highest purposes that we can. In other words, instead of, say, treating her daughter like she might, uh, this I'm specifically thinking of this woman who cut my hair, um, instead of allowing things to go negative, start turning things to the positive. Start doing things for the good of that person into the future. Start being a witness for Christ in one way or another. Instead of wasting the time on regret for the past or saying, you know, thinking about time, that's just not me. I've heard people say that. That's just not me. Well, you know what? God wants it to be us. Jesus told a parable. We call it the parable of the talents. He has, he gives, uh, I think it was five talents to one person. He gives two talents to another and, and one to another. And the object of that parable isn't talent because a talent in the Bible is a degree of, or a, a, a denomination of currency, okay? It's like $100, but it's way more. Uh, but it, we think of talent as an ability to maybe sing or, or uh, act well or uh, fix cars or uh, cultivate plants. You know, we, those are talents that we think of. I have a green thumb. Well, I have a brown thumb. But uh, anyway, God says, gave us that parable of the talents, not for... Um, comparison between ourselves or to say that I have less talent than Brother Dave because I can't play the trumpet. That's not what he meant. What the, the parable of the talents is about opportunity. It's about our opportunity to work for the kingdom, for the kingdom of God, and to use those opportunities to the best of our ability. The rewards are well, well done, good and faithful servant. Whoever the servant was, right? Enter into the joy of thy Lord. And so wanting to hear that, we want to take this opportunity and say, instead of, well, that's not just, just not me, but say, I want to change. And I want to fulfill God's purposes for my life. And so, well, if I use my time for the good of God's kingdom and for the benefit of others, that will be time well spent. That will be time well spent. And Lord willing, in the day that he calls us home, he'll say, well done good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's stand and sing number 160 together. Let me get my songbook. Number 160. And it won't be on the screen because nobody knew it was coming but me. <laughs> okay. But praise the Lord. I hope that encourages you slightly. I, I was blessed to uh, see that sort of unfolding before me throughout this last couple weeks. And uh, it brought me to a greater awareness of how I use my time. And so uh, I wanted to share that so maybe you could gain that too. Praise the Lord. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith. Christ 
the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life. Center this to the loving call, wonderful words of life. Also freely given, moving us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we could be in your presence this morning. Thank you that we could gather together and share the faith that we have with each other. Mostly feel the touch of your spirit and your presence on our hearts. We pray, O oh God, that this would be time well spent. We pray, O oh God, that as we look forward and go forward in the days to come, that you would give us the purpose that you want for our lives and that we would live for not just ourselves but for those around and those to come as well. We pray that we would be a blessing for the kingdom of heaven's sake in the lives of other people around us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you and greet each other as you go. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>